Hello everybody, my name is Alan and today I'm going to do my first uh, YouTube video ever uh, in regards to Bible prophecy and events that are taking place. This one in particular being my first one, I've been studying for years, uh, doing research for years and I've never done a video. I've watched and learned from so many good uh, teachers, uh, pastors and just a number of teachers uh, from around the world on YouTube. And something struck me in this past week that I did a lot of research and instantly felt that I needed to bring this to light. Um, and the, the word that kept coming to me as I was praying about it was the word posterity, posterity, posterity. It just kept coming to me. And you'll, you'll see why. What we're going to talk about today is the mark of the beast, the days of Noah, and how it relates and at the end uh like me i'm sure you're 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 going to be blown away you're going to see exactly what it is exactly what uh what the lord meant when he said as the days of noah uh we'll get into that uh here i'm not sure if this video is going to be one longer video that i'll piece together but i'm using a screen what is it a screenomatic for the first time and a, it only gives me 15 minutes, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to piece them together using just YouTube edit or if I'll do part one, part two, part three. It just depends on how long it goes. Uh, but before we get into the days of Noah and the mark of the beast and what it really all involves, I'm going to just touch on this just real briefly, hopefully just uh, three or four minutes here before we get into it. And that's what a lot of people, and this is what a lot of people have been talking about lately. But of that day and hour, no one knows. This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 36. So of that day, that, oops, that day and that hour, no one knows. Now, we know that if God wanted to be more precise, he could have been more precise. Uh, he could have given us a lot more detail. But he says of that day and of that hour. Now, those that have been following a lot with what's been going on online for the Revelation 12 sign in the sky, I don't believe, I've heard people that say, other pastors say, oh, these guys are saying, or this person is saying, this is the date, this is the date. Never once have has the person who's really discovered this and put this together and those that follow him ever said that this was the day and the hour. That's not what he's saying. But we do know that the, the Lord used it as an idiom. So to just touch on this briefly, I'll deal with it in another video. Um, but he tells us to watch. He tells us we should know the seasons. We should know the times that we're in. And there is a lot to that, uh, like I said, that I'll do in another video. But let me give you an example here. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Now, we know that that had to do with the idiom of the wedding feast. Nobody knew the day or the hour. The bridegroom would leave to his father's house, prepare another place. Once he was done, he'd wait for his father's approval, and then bang, they would go back and get her. Um, and so in that case, nobody knew the day or the hour. But also, of the only day, the Feast of Trumpets, that is two days. And the reason it's two days is because nobody knows which day, see, nobody knows the day, or the hour that they're going to see the crescent of the new moon. So it also relates to the day and the hour. So let's see if there's somewhere else in the Bible where it tells us maybe more detail as to, you know, could God have given us more detail and really not wanted us to know the time, the seasons, the year, those types of things. Well, let's check this out. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 15, you have the angels that were bound in the Euphrates River. And look, in Revelation 9, 15, and four, and, sorry, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year. So you see, it's very, very descriptive here that they were purposed for this time, this day, this month, this hour. It is extremely, extremely detailed. So compared to the day or the hour. So it makes a lot of sense that if we're watching, we would know the day or the hour or sorry we would sorry we wouldn't know the day or the hour but we could know possibly the year the month 
if we're watching. Because here's the other thing. We go to Amos 3, 7, and it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So we know from history that he's going to reveal to his prophets. Let's go back here. Now let's get into this. This will lead us into the days of Noah as well. If you look at Noah and you see, but as in the days, as it were in the days of Noah, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they who weren't paying attention, they were eating, drinking, giving to marriage. Doesn't mean there weren't there's not going to be believers in the end. That's it's just stating they, as in those who aren't paying attention, were given into marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Noah entered the ark. Well, what did Noah do? He walked with God. He knew God. And when they say walked with God, just like we say, you know, how is your walk with the Lord? How's your walk with God? It doesn't mean he was physically walking with God. It means he was in the spirit. He was praying. He was talking to God. And so Noah would classify as what? He would be a prophet. And who entered the ark with him? Those who he told and believed him, which were his family. So it's very, very similar that he will tell his prophets. They will know. And you can see how, you know, there, there's people that are going to know because they're paying attention. And it's being revealed in its time. So I'm going to leave it at that for now because there's a lot more that we can go into there. But this is about the days of Noah in regards to the chip and in the last days. And what has been revealed to me, um, I just I heard a little snippet about a week ago and didn't just it caught me off guard. And when I heard about it, it was just a, a, a brief mention and I started doing research. And we've heard about a lot of this, uh, you know, the uh, Vera Chip Company. And, you know, a lot has happened with that. And I'm going to put that together for you here. But what I wanted to do here is let's go into the days of Noah. So I'm just going into uh, Esword here, which is a great reference for Hebrew and Greek um, to get original descriptions, original word meanings. Uh, but the reason I want it is because, as you saw, I have a lot of screens open at the top. And I'm running out of space to know what I what I have up there. So if we go into this, and we're here in Genesis 2, and the sons of God. Now a lot of this, a lot of us know this. A lot of people that are watching, that are paying attention, that are watching these kinds of channels, know about the sons of God came into the daughters of men. You know, they took wives to them, uh, human wives. So what ends up happening here? They create giants. We know that giants were huge. And, you know, there's a lot of talk of this cover-up with Smithsonian. We get all of this. But what was, what was the point? What was happening in these days of Noah? Well, there were giants in the earth, so on the earth here, but also after that. So after that, well, we don't see any giants around now, but I will get to that and explain exactly where this all leads. So there were giants in those days and after that. So that's very, very important. But what happened, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the generations of Noah, so his kids, himself, him and his wife, uh, that Noah was a just man and perfect. Perfect doesn't mean that he was a perfect person. There was no perfect man after Adam fell. So what we can see is that he was without spot, without blemish. And what that's saying is because he walked with God, he prayed, and the bigger meaning is without blemish. He was full human. He didn't have any mix of his DNA. And that is the key that we're going to get to, is his mix of DNA. So you can see the Lord saw that the earth was corrupt and filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted. So all flesh, except obviously up here, Noah and his family, because he was still of a pure human. He didn't have any mixed blood, any, you know, what we call Nephilim blood in him or his family. They were pure in their bloodline. That's what this is about. So there was no corruption in their flesh, but in everybody else, they were corrupted. 
and we'll get into this piece over here too um, also after that because then we say oh well also after that and then we don't hear anything about well we do hear about giants later on we'll talk about that um, but where did they come from if everybody was wiped out if the Lord wiped out everybody it said he was wiping out all flesh from the earth well how did we still have giants in the land after that and that's what we'll also get into so let's go over here we've all if not all most of us have heard of this Verichip company the Verichip company took a lot of flack uh, I believe because they had the name chip in it and everybody started freaking out and saying don't take the chip now I've heard from a lot of uh, listening to a lot of pastors and there's one in particular that stands out in um, I'm not going to mention his name but a very big pastor great teacher uh, from he's, he's an older guy now and he didn't think that the chip back when he had made this recording was a big deal you know it, it just contained information now obviously yes it's something to pay attention to and be concerned with but it was just going to contain your information you know whether it be your banking or you know at that time and even now it was going to contain maybe your your health records and so forth for when you go to the hospital and you know in that sense if you really looked into it that wasn't the totality the total information of the chip that was going to be the key so i started doing a little bit dig a little bit of digging um or quite a bit of digging and <laughs> what i came across uh, it's it's your your jaw's gonna drop uh, literally when I discovered the first one and I shared it with my family they they couldn't believe it and I've, I've got a 14 year old son and 11 year old daughter who I've been sharing over the years different things that I've come to learn and uh, and come to know and I'll tell you this was this was oh my goodness and like I said I've come to believe that it's it's a posterity thing it's this video is meant to get out to as many people as possible and I'll talk about doing that later um, you're free to share it as often or however you want and uh, you'll see why as we get going forward because of what this chip now is it's no longer the Vera chip they took so much heat for it and so they've they changed and that's what we're gonna get into um, and where, when they changed there maybe there was some talk about it but there really wasn't a whole bunch and I'll, I'll show you that and I'll show you where it went to so everybody remembers their logo there's still people that talk about it now so let's have a look here when we look up the Verichip company we find a company called Digital Angel I thought that was pretty interesting as well so this company called Digital Angel were the ones that developed the GPS uh, RFID and they owned uh, a minority position and you can see here 49 percent they owned the whole minority position in Verichip and they diversified and when they say diversified that doesn't mean they totally disappeared and left all of it but it just said that they diversified their stake and I'll, I'll let you know about more about that as well but now let's look okay so let's do some digging here and see what we can find on digital angel well if you click on digital angel this is what comes up jam technologies so it's no longer called digital angel or maybe digital angel is the parent but when you click on digitalangel.com jam technologies comes up they don't tell you anything you can't click anywhere you can't find anything else out about them so what do they do their provider of medical device industry external identification of implanted medical devices so now this company is involved in some way we already know because they're connected to the Verichip so they have the external technologies that can detect the chip in somebody and read whatever their medical information is on there but they're also the RFID implantable component because again they're also part of Verichip with the formerly named Verichip so now let's go back and see what happens here so after Digital Angel diversified we don't know what how much what happened there but just that they diversified in 2008 after that Verichip Corporation and Steel Vault Corporate merged into a company called 
positive ID. Uh, you can see why all this happened, why they were pulling away from the Verichip um, name because it was so controversial, right? And the controversial Verichip human implant caused a lot of, uh, just caused an uproar. When they changed to positive ID uh, a few years back now, there was a little bit of talk about it, but it just seems to disappear and don't really hear too, too much about it anymore. And like I said, what I'm going to reveal to you guys here today, what this uh, really has come to and why it is so important now more than ever to absolutely not take the chip. Now, for believers, uh, those in the body of Christ, we're not going to see this. We're not going to see what's going to come from this chip. But this, like I said, is for posterity, and you're allowed to share it and record it and do as much as you want to share uh, what's here because I believe this is going to be very important for those who are left um, to reveal to them why it's important not to take the chip and why the chip condemns you. That is, that's the key. So let's have a look here. We've got one company through Digital Angel that is medical and RFID. Okay, there's your metal, medical records and your tracking. Now let's go into Steel Vault. Well, when we go look into Steel Vault, let's see here. We find out that Steel Vault, here it is, Steel Vault Corp, which again, if you click on their website, if you click on this, the website doesn't exist anymore. But in this case, it's, it's more understandable because the company is no longer, it's merged. So let's see who Steel Vault was. We don't get a whole bunch, but we get some, and it's the important stuff. Steel Vault is IFTH Acquisition Corp. DBA is doing business as Steel Vault. So what was Steel Vault's big deal? Why would they be involved in merging with the Verichip? Well, here we go. Premier leader in uh, security products and services, including credit monitoring, credit reports, and other identity theft protection services. Hmm. So the acquisition company acquired National Credit Report. So what do we have here? We have now all of your private banking information, your credit report, uh, anything relating to your credit is now in there. Here we've got now, cannot your, you cannot buy and sell. The other one has, we know what's wrong with you. We know what your medical history is and anything concerning you and your what's in your DNA. And we know where to find you or how to find you. So if we go in and we click on uh, this company here, we try to say, okay, Steel Vault, like I said, you're not going to find anything on them. But if we go to, let's see if we can find IFTH, Acquisition Corp, and we do a little digging here and we come up, oh, <laughs> Just like the others, they've all disappeared. So there's nothing there. So what do we, let's see, was this the next one? This is a little bit later. So we come across and we realize that that company is no longer there either. So we do a little bit more digging. We see, you know, who else is connected with positive ID. And as this video continues, it's going to get more and more and more interesting. Some of this is starting to become new to, to many of you, I'm sure, uh, some of this information, but it's going to continue and it's going to get crazier. So after a little bit more research, we see again in 2009, so a lot of this was around 08, 09 that started happening. And all of these chip, uh, their, their uh, ticker number, their trading symbol, for Verichip, for Steel Vault, for uh, Digital Angel, they're no longer. You can't find them. They're, they're not publicly traded anymore. Again, it could still have to do with the fact that it's now um, all come under the new name. So after doing a little bit more digging, we find out this company here, Verichip, also went into a deal with Receptors LLC. Right off the bat, receptors, dealing with the Verichip, you know, it, it starts to make you go, hmm. So a lot of it seems really good. You can read through this. Um, and I don't know that I'll leave links, but I mean, you could always copy. Uh, you can see what's up here in, um, in the link up here. So looking into this more, you find out that they created a product 
Um, they say it's for, you know, if there's pandemics or like here, bioterrorism, any bio threats. And they created this platform for being able to detect it. Um, and people coming in that may have it with in their bodies, like uh, whether it be uh, in their bloodline. Because remember this in, in their bloodstream, sorry. So you got to remember all of this is going back to the blood. So we can see here uh, the product currently is currently in the marketplace. So the products that are currently in the marketplace, they're expensive. They take too much time. Um, and the companies, this company here, these companies, so say the, the companies, that's through uh, Positive ID with this company, Receptors and Verichip, all these companies combined. That's what they mean by the companies here. Products are expected to produce a result within 20 minutes. And you'll find out what this all is and how it ties in with the chip again. So let's go down here and we could see uh, the chairman of Verichip at the time before the name was changed. Uh, as we continue to build our partnership with receptors, which started uh, with the development of a glucose sensing RFID implantable microchip, which we now know they've moved well past. We're moving beyond patent, uh, sorry, patient identification to sensors that can be detected and identify illnesses and viruses such as influenza. Well, that's uh, pretty crazy. Now they're telling you within the bloodstream that these receptors that this company, uh, the receptors company has developed can now detect illnesses. And we've got to remember this is back in 2009 they had this ability. So what you're about to see is going to get even more detailed when it comes to blood and DNA. And you can see him uh, here down here, the partnership. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Last week, Verichip announced it has expanded its um, its existing development partnership with receptors beyond the glucose RFID in in implantable uh, microchip. Uh, here we go. Other biological and environmental applications. And they have a patent for it. So this is their technology now. So other biological and environmental applications. All right. That's starting to get a little, little bit more interesting here. So who are these guys? We do some digging. We can find a little bit of information here. Well, now let's click on their website. Oh, what do you know? Once again, there's nothing. So did these guys merge with them? That I don't know for sure. So now let's go back to here. We've identified Angel, Digital Angel. We've identified, of course, Verichip that everybody had already, or most people had known about. We've identified Steelcorp. We've identified another partnership with, with Verichip through Receptor. And what did they all do? Again, RFID and, oops, RFID and medical through Digital Angel. The chip itself, which is more or less the, the RFID part of it. And... Now they've also merged with Steelcorp, which is all your credit information. And they've done some sort of partnership with Receptor and Receptor has the ability now to detect people that have different, um, what was it, illnesses in them. And can, you know, it, it all seems really good that they're gonna be doing things that are gonna help people. But as they've continued to develop this, we come to find the the truth, whether they even know about it or not, somebody somewhere up there absolutely knows what's going to be going on with this. And I'm going to expose it here today. So now let's go a little bit further. Okay, we've done that. We can get rid of that window now. Now let's find out positive ID, the main name in the whole thing. Now, when we say positive ID, and when, I, when I'm talking about positive ID, you have to remember, whoever's listening to this in the future, it may be a different name. It can come in ABC protection. It, it makes no difference what the name's going to be. It's understanding that what you're about to put in you is going to change who you are. And you'll see this. Or, yeah, I won't get it. I'll let the, the build-up keep going here. So... 
we look in we look at positive ID. We can see formerly Ver formerly Verichip. You can tell there's the the main piece of the Verichip logo. And let's look over here. Digital Angel is the parent company. Well, how about that? Can't find anything on Digital Angel except what we've already looked at and a website that goes nowhere and just gives us a little bit more information. Um, so now, Verichip really here, it's talking about um, how it's been approved. I mean, it's, we know that it's been approved for a long time and that it's really, you know, more RFID and tracking technology and so forth. Uh, here, their merger with um, with uh, Steel Vault and so forth. And we can go down and find out some more information. You know, again, a lot of people knew of this change. A lot of us have heard and maybe watched some videos or and maybe even read some books of Mark Dice uh, regarding the Mark of the Beast. Uh, and there were a lot of pastors, a lot of different ministers and ministries uh, that said, you know, this is this is wrong and, you know, based biblically that's very accurate and the point of this wasn't of this video isn't so much to um to enlighten anybody in the fact of not taking the chip every bible believing christian knows you just don't take that chip this is going to be for people who don't know for one and for two to reveal to everybody what it means when it comes to the days of noah and how does this chip, regardless of the name, even though it's now under positive ID, what it means in the days of Noah? <laughs> it's it's going to get wild after this. So here, let's go now to positive ID. We can just click on the website. And, oh, sorry, this one wasn't the website. This was a link to more information. This, uh, this was a, a paper from uh, the positive ID website uh, talking about their RFID chip and their acquisitions and you know health id security id working with receptors this is how i came across uh, receptors so all relating to making this this chip more complete if you will you can find all of them verichip steel vault uh you know cleared for fda for implantable for health for security for for dealing with receptors and what they did and their their patent and their information is very very uh important for glucose uh the technology that they have with glucose uh in regards to how it it's received within the body and of course there you go national credit and now it gets into greater detail now we're going to go into positive id's website and we'll go let's go right here let's go to their home page when we go to their home page, you'll see one of the uh, the keys that pops up right here. Look at that. Oh, a DNA strand. Well, how about that? That's nice, isn't it? Because we know where we're heading here. Well, let's see. Let's see the friendly people that these guys partner with. Who do these guys work with? Let's have a look here. Oh, they work with the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, NASA, and Special Operations Command. Oh, all of the friendlies, wouldn't you say? So the next step here I'm going to put into a second video is what this chip is all about, and it's going to be the final chapter. Thanks a lot. All right. Hello, everybody. So we're in part two of this breakdown with the new revelations into the mark of the beast, the days of Noah, and this will be the final chapter in this where we'll put together you know last we spoke was looking at the partners um we spoke about other companies that had merged and were working with the new company because it's no longer called it's been in this company for a little while now for a few years um but we can see who they were working with and we saw the mergers and other companies that they're working with with their technologies so let's have a look into positive id and what they've started developing into. So let's go down here and look into their technology. Get ready, folks. This is about to uh, drop your jaw. So let's have a look here. Positive ID develops biological detection and diagnostic systems. And these are their two brands that they have, which use real-time polymerase, if I've got that right, 
um, chain reaction. So we'll call that just like they have here now, PCR chemistry. Check this out. PCR amplifies a sample's DNA and copies it billions of times. Do you understand what that says? Amplifies a sample's DNA. A sample's who's that? Anybody. It'll analyze somebody's DNA or amplify somebody's DNA and can copy it billions of times. Now, when we first think of this, this seems new. To me, it seemed new. But apparently, it's been around for quite a while. So let's see PCR um, and what this is all about. So even just the fact here, looking at this, this was the first thing that, I mean, when I, when I read this, I, was, uh, I couldn't believe it. It amplifies DNA. So if they had this technology, here's one format. I believe there's two possibilities coming out of all this. It has the ability, they have the ability to amplify a DNA because of this system, this, uh, this reaction that they do here. Now, we'll see in, a, in the explanation of what PCR is and when it got started that it's nothing new. It's the fact that the chip company now uses this process. And they plan on using it for good to be able to, you know, check people right then and there while they're at the border, for example. They want to check to make sure somebody's not coming in with uh, all sorts of different diseases. So it seems good at first. Same with the other things they were doing. Um, it seems it seems okay. It seems somewhat reasonable to protect people for health and so forth. But it goes further than that. Let's have a look here. If we read more into this and find out more about their technology, we're also going to see who they're working with. So the complex my microfluidic systems to perform the sampling process. Again, going back to the PCR in real time to be able to analyze and to be able to multiply someone's blood sample. But now you got to pay attention to who's using it. Here we go. DARPA's here, which we know because we saw that earlier. Let's have a look into what PCA is and does. Well, we know it amplifies a sample of DNA and can copy it billions of times over. Remember that. This isn't just some company now that has it, that's been using it uh, in the medical field, just as it has been for now for a few decades. Or at least, yeah, two or three decades now, as we'll see. It's the fact of who has this technology and who's using it. So let's have a look at this PCR and what it is. <laughs> Get ready. When I came across this, this was when uh, I had already told my family about it uh, a couple days, three days prior. And I, would, I just kept following the trail. And it was about 11.30 at night, and I went upstairs, and I, I woke up my wife. I, I said, honey, I'm sorry to wake you, but I have to tell you about this. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was reading. Um, and I shared this with her, and she she was like me. And when I first saw it, I, I didn't move. I was reading it, and um, my mouth was open. It felt like for a long time. It was probably 30 seconds. I, I, I just kept rereading it. I, I couldn't believe it. So here we go. And again, we're going to see this, and it's nothing new. You can see it's the technique. It'll amplify a single copy of DNA uh, and generate it back then thousands to millions of times of a particular DNA sequence. It's cheap. It's easy to do. And they're already doing it. So it was developed, by, or de yeah, developed discovered in uh, 1983 and is now a common and often indispensable technique used in clinical and research laboratories for a broad variety of applications. Well, let's see what these applications are. <laughs> DNA cloning. Oh, that seems great, doesn't it? Gene cloning and manipulation. Look at that. For gene cloning and gene manipulation. Again, let's, you know, go back to, to what they were saying over here. When they were saying it over here, what they were using it for. 
amplifying somebody's DNA billions of times. It seems like a great reasonable thing because they can, the purpose for it um, with how they're using it in research and so forth and how they plan on using it at borders and out in the field for, for diseases is they'll take a little bit of the DNA and when they examine it, just instead of having that tiny amount, they can multiply it many, many times so that they can do extensive research without needing more of it. And what they can do with it, though, is gene cloning and manipulation. So let's keep reading. It gets better. <laughs> so, and here's a few other things. Construction of DNA, base, polygenes, functional, okay, analysis. Get ready. They can diagnose and monitor, which was the point of Digital Angel and what Digital Angel was bringing to the table and what they were focusing on. Again, all part of positive ID and of hereditary disease. But get ready, folks. As well as amplification of ancient freaking DNA. Now, what would be the purpose or the point of amplifying an ancient DNA? For what purposes? This is where the puzzle starts to come together, starts to complete. Ancient DNA amplification. From a company, from a company who, positive ID, has and is the chip company, the RFID tracking company, who is the National Credit Report company, who works with all of the constant ones that we find everywhere, who deals in gene manipulation through this company, who has the ability and works with multiplying genes. Do you get it? As in the days of Noah. What were they doing in the days of Noah? It was more than just eating, drinking, giving into marriage. Right? Something was going on. Well, we know what was going on. There were giants in the land. And even after. Right? We know that back in Genesis 6. There were giants in the earth and even after that. Who were these giants that were in the land even after that? Well, we also know in, from Numbers that there were giants in the land. Let's go to Numbers 13. The Lord spoke to Moses, send out the men to search Canaan. Well, who's Canaan? Canaan is Ham's son, who became the Canaanites, who were possessing the land of Israel when they had to go in and send in the spies. And when the spies came back, what did they say? Let's go down here. We find out that they were the giants. We were like grasshoppers to them. And in their sights, we were grasshoppers. Because they were the giants. So they were giants after the flood. Here's your giants after the flood. Well, how did that come about? Who did Noah's sons have to marry? They had to get the women from somewhere. They weren't from the pure bloodline of Noah. They got them from the people in the village there before everything went to crap and got flooded and everything was killed. And we know that Canaan ended up getting cursed. It wasn't Ham that was cursed. It was Canaan that was cursed for what he did. When Ham saw him and got his two brothers, they walked backwards, put the blanket over him because Noah was hammered. He was drunk from his own vineyard. And when Noah woke up, he saw something had been done to him. Could you imagine, could you think what that could have been? There aren't many people that talk about this, but there are some. Perry Stone talks about this. Um, he, he was sexually assaulted, if you will, by his grandson, Canaan. He had the seed in him. Did maybe others have some of the seed of the fallen, the, the Nephilim in him? 
the blood, the mixing of the blood was from the wives to the sons of Noah. That's the problem. And that's why we still had the giants in the land. No, and Canaan got cursed. And who was Canaan? Well, that was the Canaanites. They inhabited the land. And who had to go and wipe them out? Right? It was the Israelites that had to go in. And then they became afraid. They were giants, so they didn't get to go possess it yet. But it was the Canaanites. Look at this. Who are the Canaanites? Uh, let's see if I have it here. Who were the Canaanites? Let's have a look. Here we go. These are the descendants of Canaan. All of them that dwelt in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea. These are all descendants of Canaan. This is what's going on here. So there's your giants, but we don't see giants anymore. Why is that? Breeding. Just the, the big giants, it eventually went away. It essentially like bred out, but not totally out, which again takes us back to this technology. Do you get it? Do you start to see it now? It takes us back to this technology and the ability to amplify ancient DNA. Why on earth would the Lord God wipe out everybody in the, no in the flood of Noah? Everybody except Noah's family. Why was that? Because their bloodline was corrupted. So in the future, when we see, and, and that goes into when the Israelites went into different areas, they were told to wipe out every man, woman, child, even the babies sucking, right, feeding. And then the next one, it was go wipe out the men, women, children, and the animals. Why do you think that was? It was because they were also doing stuff with animals. They all had to be wiped out. And again, in some cases, they didn't wipe them all out. We know that from Scripture. So how does that relate to the end times? Why would the Lord God say anybody who takes the mark of the beast is going to get wiped out? All right, let's see if we can, let's see if this is the one up here, all right? So this is when it, this is the, the wrath now coming out. We're at the bowls here towards the end. We're in Revelation 16, 2, and it says, Upon the men who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped and those who worshipped his image. It's the same man. If you have the mark, you're also going to worship his image. So what that's saying is anybody who has the mark of the beast won't have a chance. They're finished. You know, pastors have taught this for a long time as well. You're, you're done. You've got no chance. So what is it with the mark that makes it like the days of Noah, that makes it like the end times where... If you have this mark, there's no way for you to be redeemed. It, it, it seals your fate. Was it just because it was a mark to, to buy and sell and do those things? No. It's all about the blood. It's the bloodline, the DNA. It's about the whole. Now, we see here, as discussed, the amplification of ancient DNA. What the heck is that? Right. Let's go a little bit further. Let's let's bring it into you know th this goes up even into 2017, but I believe this video was uh, a couple years ago. So here we look at former defense. Uh, so DARPA, the DARPA director, now an executive, a Google executive, Regina. A lot of people have seen this video. It won't pull up here. Um, you can always go search it up online and you'll find it. And she talks about you know, all these different chips and things that they're doing now, tattoos and everything. And if you read this here, again, DARPA, right? Where do, where do we find DARPA? Oh, yeah, that's right. She worked with, um, with this company, I'm sure, through Positive ID. When we go down in tech to, into the technologies and we find out, under the gene manipulation, who are they working with, right? Oh, DARPA. 
and she was Regina or Regina. She was the director. So she knows all about this. And now she's at Google. So here they're talking about the ingestible microchip, um, the tattoo. You know, they have a couple of different things they're working on. But see, where they're having their problem, she says, is between machines and humans. And they're trying to specifically target 10 to 20-year-olds and the wonderful new technologies and the qualities of the new technology that could stretch in, hum in the human body and still be functional. Right, that's the the tattoo part they're talking about. But now let's get down to this. This is from oops, this is from Regina. One of the things she was quoting. These biochips look like integrated circuits in a personal computer, but instead of containing tiny semiconductors, they are loaded with bits of actual DNA. Here we go again, DNA that make up genes or fragments of genes inserted in a PC-sized analytical instrument, the chips allow scientists to perform thousands of biometrical experiments at a fraction of the cost and time required by traditional tests. So now not only is it faster, it's cheaper, it's, it, it, they're inserting DNA into the chip. So do you get what's going on here? Not only is the ability to have the chip all of this stuff goes back to positive id and her having been with darpa being the director of darpa now she's with google and she's talking about this same technology and what their abilities are so you have positive id who is chip who is medical who is your everything about your financial information who is who has the ability now to insert dna into the chip as we've read here by not some fool not some conspiracy theorist but by this woman who was the director of darpa and now an executive at google come on people put it together and what else do they do well we also know they can amplify awaken gene, ancient DNA. So do you get how now we've come full circle and as the days of Noah, how that's going to be happening in the future? So this is a call out to anybody who's not a believer, who, who hasn't come to the Lord, to realize that this chip isn't some great be all, end all. Hey, I could just walk around and I'll be able to buy and sell. No, 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 no. It's beyond that. They might even sell it. And I'm sure they'll sell it to say, hey, we're going to be able to help cure your heart disease or prevent heart disease and cancers and all these things if you take the chip. That'll be another benefit to it. You may live longer, they'll tell you. But check this out. Here's a big thing as we close this out. You have the amplification ability of ancient DNA. You have the ability, which means once that chips in, it can work on the DNA that's in it and it already within the body and amplify the, those ancient genes that are found in that blood. And then they can multiply it millions and billions of times. What does that start to do? It's they're bringing back the gene. They can amplify the gene of the Nephilim, of the giants. There's no other way God would suddenly say, all of you, I don't care, man, woman, child, anybody taking this, suddenly you're unredeemable just because it's buying and selling. No, folks. It has to do with the blood. What it's going to do to your DNA. You won't be majority human anymore anymore with a little bit of that ancient DNA in you, right? Then over here, they tell you that they have the ability to put DNA in to the circuit, or in this case, they're talking about it in a different, different form, but it still works and it still applies to the chip. So they have the ability to put it in there and release gene fragments in it. So if you don't have it, it's possible they could insert it. If you do have it, they will 
amplify it, and multiply it. Now let's have a look. What happens, you know, in the days of Noah, these were big, strong men. They could handle all sorts of things. Okay, well, let's have a look to see if this makes any sense in, in Revelation and say, okay, it, that's what happened, you know, back then they were big and strong. Okay, well, let's see what these people can handle who have the mark of the beast. We know that all craziness is going to be released when it comes to the wrath. The wrath is going to be way worse than the first three and a half years. Well, let's see what these men can endure who have the mark. The fourth angel poured, up, poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given him to scorch men with fire. Scorch men with fire. When you look at that, scorching the men with fire is to burn them. Not just, oh, here's a little lighter, here, I burn you with a cigarette. No, to scorch them. And what did they do? They blasphemed the name of God and the power that he, of the power he has over these plagues. They weren't all dying and burning up and screaming, oh, help me. They're cursing God. Seems like they're able to take some pain. Okay, let's, let's go a step further. Let's go into the seventh bowl. And God's saying it's done. Great hail from heaven fell upon the men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. <laughs> okay, a weight of a talent. Do you have any idea how much the weight of a talent is? Let's have a look. In ancient Greek and in Babylonian, in Egyptian times, it's about 60 pounds. And the more heavy common one in the New Testament was more like 130 pounds. So these guys are getting pummeled. They're getting crushed, just hit with 60 pounds to 130 pound weights. And what do they do? They say, they blasphemed God for the plague and the hail. Didn't say they were getting crushed and destroyed and, oh, please help us. Oh, no, no. They seem to be surviving it. So that kind of gives a little bit more insight to the fact that, wait a second, these people who have taken the mark, it's not only buying and selling and doing these things. There is something within their gene, within their blood that's been changed because they took this mark. Now, can they be forced to take the mark? Absolutely not. It will willfully be done because they're going to want to buy and sell and they're going to fall into this because they, they want to be able to buy and sell and they haven't come to accept and know who Jesus Christ is. Those who will come to know and accept Jesus Christ, we know it tells us in, in Revelation here that they're going to be beheaded for it. It tells us in many places that they're going to have to be beheaded for their belief. But those who are around after and have taken this chip, they they still seem to be surviving through all of these catastrophes that are coming to them. Now, how is that possible that men are able to take 60 to 130 pound weights falling on them, flying on them from the sky? It's It really doesn't seem to make any sense. But it kind of does when you think as in the days of Noah with the giants. Now, are, are men going to start turning and transforming and being giants? I don't think so. But it does appear they're going to be given some sort of maybe superhuman strength, extra strength. You know, that may sound, oh, sweet, I'm going to be uh, extra strong and mighty and, you know, be an Avenger. No, I wouldn't count on that being a blessing. It's a curse. And this video like I said, it's for posterity, to wake people up once the rapture, the harpazo, the taking away, the catching away, the catching up has happened and the church is out of the way. There's nobody left to, to prevent the hand of the oppressor. Holy Spirit, Jesus, through Jesus Christ, the, the hand has been lifted and it's, it's going to be craziness. So again, you go back into the days of Noah and you look at what they were doing from, you know, bestiality and with kids and the taking men in the streets and setting up beds in the streets. When we're out of the way, we're going to see the days of Noah. That kind of craziness and more is going to happen. And when the gene is activated, when it's multiplied, when it's released in these people, in all those who have taken the mark, you're going to see even crazier things. So this video 
is to show you, to, pre to present the evidence as to what it actually is, where we are, and that it's actually a, the ability to do it is now. So how close are we to the end? I just, all I could say is we are extremely, extremely close. And I've seen a lot of evidence pointing to, <laughs> let, let me just say very close without making a whole other video out of uh, the end of this. Um, and now you've got the evidence. This company, never mind what the name of this company is except to do the research on it, it could be any name in the future and in other parts of the world. The fact is everything involved in this chip and everyone involved in it points to the fact that this is going to be the one that combines it all together regardless of the name. You can see who they're working with, the companies that were involved. Everything that this chip contains, uh, the parts of it, uh, what it can do, what the company does with uh, in the biometrics, in, in DNA, in manipulation, there's your answer. It is all here, and it's going to be an either awakening of an ancient DNA that they're going to be able to multiply within the blood, or it's going to be inserted, and it's going to be through the DNA that is going to be in that chip and released to amplify within that human host body which would then make people as they were in the days of Noah and unredeemable when did the flood come when did God literally destroy everybody it was during the flood once he had Noah and his family go in the boat they stayed there for seven days before everything went crazy we're gonna go into the the church is gonna be taken out of the way for seven years not the seven days and this craziness is going to be released on earth. Once that chip is taken, there you go. As it was in the days of Noah. Once that DNA is released and it's in the bloodlines, in the bloodstreams of men, there you go. Your days of Noah are about to be hell on earth is what's about to happen. So for all those watching this and we're already gone and this has actually been for posterity, get ready. So, like I said, this is uh, all about posterity. I believe this is going to be very important for people in the future. When they look around and they see all these people that have suddenly vanished all over the world and there's chaos beginning, I pray that people have heard this message. They, they'll remember it even if they hadn't accepted Christ back then. And it will spark something in them to say, oh my goodness, I heard about this. Here, this is coming to pass. Oh my goodness, there's this mark. They're telling us to take this mark. And I remember that video where do not take the mark because it'll mean destruction. You're, you're done and you'll spend eternity in hell. And obviously the purpose of this is to save you guys from that. And hopefully some along the way before that time comes. You know, let's go into Romans. Let's go into Romans, Romans 8, no, Romans 10, 8 it is. And it's about salvation, right? The word is nigh thee, is soon upon thee, is soon thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, which we're telling you about. This, is, this isn't something I've made up. This is from the word of God with evidence of what's taking place as we speak in this world and the ability, what they have the ability to now do. So that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart is where you believe and unto righteousness. And with the mouth is where you confess your salvation. For the scripture said, whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I really like, um, I've listened to a lot of teachers online 
uh, a lot of pastors from around the world. And I really like the way one put it. Uh, I, I've heard it many times and I've heard him say it many times. But in the last few months, or a couple months, it, it's really hit home and it's helped me talk about it more. Even this evidence that I'm revealing to you now has made it easier for me to talk to people. It's, there's so many people out there who have heard the chip. You know, they've heard Christians or people talk about the chip. Oh, don't take the chip because it's gotten coverage on the media a few years back. So they've heard about this chip. They don't understand what's going on, but they've heard of it. So what this has done is it's made it just another easy intro into saying, hey, you know what, guys, be careful. When we're gone, one day we will be. Just don't take this thing. Here's why. And go find a Bible. And we can kind of leave it at that. And this other piece that uh, many teachers have talked about over the years, but I, I give credit on this to Jonathan Kleck. I love what Jonathan Kleck has revealed. There's no way it could have been revealed without the Lord God having revealed it to him. You just can't find that kind of stuff, just happenstance, by chance, and all these things. So, But the way he put it was what he did. He said, Lord, Jesus, God, if you're real, I hear people saying "There's you're here, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. God, if you're real, Jesus, if you're real, show me. Leave it at that. So anybody watching this video, you could literally just leave it at that. But if you're watching this video and we're already gone, I don't think you're going to need any more evidence with all the chaos that's going on. This video is to tell you to not take the mark and come to know Jesus, come to accept him. Grab a Bible, find people, because there will be people. There'll be a lot of people coming to the saving grace of Jesus Christ once the church is gone. And those who thought they were a part of it that are going to be left here. So something so simple. If you don't believe God is real, you don't believe Jesus is real, the Bible is just a bunch of baloney, then truly in the quiet of, you know, you're having a shower, your own time, or you're going to bed, you, you don't want to say, oh, I'm praying. No, then don't pray. Just say, okay, God, if you're real, Jesus, if you're real, if this Bible thing is real, show me. And you could leave it at that. And that's what Jonathan collected. That's what a number of others have done. And I think that's a great way to let people ask God for themselves. Reveal yourself to me. Show me which one is really you, if you're real. And it, it, something crazy will happen. It, you'll receive a phone call, maybe. You'll, be, you'll have been thinking about something when you, when you said that, and bang, there's nobody that could have known it, and something happens. Or, I mean, there's so many events, and then something will, will happen, it might be grand or it might be something that was just small that you would only be effective or understood by you. And you're like, wow, that's true. When that happens, give your life to Jesus Christ. Apologize. Say, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my sins. And, I, and realize who he is and what he did for you, that he died on the cross, that he rose on the, rose on the third day and returned to heaven, ascended to heaven to be seated at his right hand, the right hand of the Father. Um, you know, that's what the purpose of this video is to, to give you the evidence on top of the times we're in and the times that are to come once the church is gone, how it will all relate and how it will be as the days of Noah, how there's no way you can be redeemed after taking the mark and why it wasn't just being able to buy and sell. It had to do with the mingling of the blood. So with that, anybody watching this, if you're around when the church is, is taken out, just do not take the mark of the beast. There'll be enough evidence. And if you've watched this video, hopefully that'll be a seed in your mind, even if you don't come to Christ before then, that this will be the seed in your mind that will remind you, oh my goodness, I better not take that. So with that, uh, God bless everybody. And, uh, you know, for a first video, um, Hopefully it does what it was supposed to do, and I look forward to doing others. Thank you very much. God bless.